Hey, what's happening? Chris Redbeer videos, and I'm going to present to you something a little bit different. Well, for me, they're all over YouTube, and everybody's doing tier lists, and I decided to deep dive into these tier lists and see which ones haven't been done yet. So, I'm going to do one that's very specific to my channel, and one that I have not seen yet, and I'm going to base mine off a specific list that was curated back in 2001. But first off, before everything else, you know that usually I have some sort of uh, title for my show, right? Usually it's like old dude playing video games is like the newest one or the fives or fandom files or something like that. So me being the kind of person who has to put everything in a list, so to speak, I like to try and title my shows. So I'm going to do this one right here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discuss with myself, if you don't mind. How about um, Tears in the Night? Tears in the Night! Dude, that is way, way too cheesy. Are you kidding me? Tears in the Night? Tears in the Night! Wow. Uh, how, about, how about Through the Tears? Like, through the years, but like, tears? The years. No? Dude. No. I got it. Trail of Tears. <laughs> no. What are you trying to get us canceled? It flame, flames, flames on the side of my face. Dude, just, just, just call it Redbeard Videos tier list. That's it. That's it. We'll do something simple like Redbeard Videos tier list. <laughs> Now, with all that nonsense out of the way, let's talk about what we're actually going to do here. I was going through my YouTube channel looking for something to fall asleep to because I often fall asleep to nostalgic things. It comforts me. It, it, it soothes my soul, so to speak. So, I came across an old VH1 special that I watched back in the early 2000s, which was hosted by D. Snyder. Now, we all know D. Snyder by now from Twisted Sister and various other things that he's done, like uh, the Strange Land horror movie, and Van Helsing's curse may not may not be a big thing, but some of us know him from that. Fangoria Radio is where I also know him because I worked with him there. Um, so I go a long ways back with D. Now he hosted the show, and the show was great. And it was the 40 greatest hair metal bands of all time. Poodle hair, baby. <laughs> and music that you'll never forget. It was the decade of decadence, right here on VH1's top 40 hair bands of all time, neck. Now, I don't, I, I didn't watch the video, all right, because it's three and a half hours long, and I remember the list vaguely. Thankfully for me, I didn't have to watch the video. It had the entire list listed below in the comments. Somebody took their uh, time or, or did me the kindness of not having to go through this video again. I don't know how they curated this video and how they put it together and what the ranking system was, but I'm just going to say I have a lot of issues with this list. And I've decided that I'm going to rank all 40 of these bands in a tier list. And I'll give you a, I don't know, 10 to 30 second blurb about each band and why I think they belong in which tier. So let's go to the board, shall we? Okay, so if we look here at the board right here, we have your typical S through F, okay? Now, I don't know who came up with the tier list rankings when this all originated, when people started doing tier lists, but I don't know why A couldn't be top. It had to be S for like supreme or superb or whatever, but let's just, for those who are not used to tier list, S is supreme, the best of the best, the creme de la creme, if you will. A is obviously, what, a hair off of the best? I guess, I don't know. B and C are middling bands. Maybe they, they have some great songs, or they had a great presentation, or they were awesome live. There were a few bands, like, I, I'll, I won't mention any of the bands that are on the list today, but like Volbeat is the perfect example for me, for a metal band that would be like a, a BC type of band, or a CD, BCD type of band, where I like some of their songs. There would probably be a solid C, Volbeat, because I like some of their songs. I really hate some of their songs too. It's a 50-50 split almost, but goddamn, those that, those guys are good live, and that's a lot of fun. So they would be the an example for me in life of a C tier band. Okay, so B C D. It's gonna be a little bit arbitrary. Where I'm gonna go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, by the way, this is all arbitrary. This is all my opinion. But there's 40 bands. 
40 bands, okay? Because F is the stinker, all right? F is the bottom, bottom tier. Now, before I do this, I want to say a few things, all right? Number one, there are quite a few. One, two, three, four, four just in the top 10 alone that I don't even think should be considered on this list as hair metal bands. It drives me crazy when some of these bands are mentioned as hair bands, and I will point those out as I go along. Also, I have no idea how VH1, D. Snyder, and those who put this list together for that special to come up with these top 40 bands of all time put their list together and how they did their rankings, but let me just tell you how I do mine, okay? This is based on my own personal likes and dislikes, based on the songs themselves, like whether I think, because there are, there are bands that I really, really like, uh, and I don't want to give away any of these bands right off the bat, but like, like I just said with Volbeat, Somebody out there, a lot of people out there, think that Volbeat's the most brilliant metal band there is, or amongst them, or amongst the best metal bands there is. I just don't see it. So that's what I'm saying. Don't think they're a bad band, though. So I wouldn't put them in an F category under any circumstance. But I wouldn't put them in an A or an S either. You get it. It's a subjective thing. It's purely opinion-based. So you're more than welcome to drop anything that you have to say about this in the comments and agree, disagree, or otherwise, because that's what this is all about. Now, the last thing I want to say before I jump into this, like with both feet, is that there are some bands that weren't mentioned, and uh, I just want to throw an honorable mention out there for just maybe one or two of them. But I think I'm going to do another one of these, depending on how this one goes. So I'm going to do this. This is my first time out at this, and I wanted to do something that I know really, really well. But there's so many bands that weren't mentioned, and the two that I want to mention most that I think would be in an A or an S category, and I have no idea why they weren't even mentioned on the, the, the top 40 whatever list forever, and maybe it's because they didn't have any massive hits or more than one, would be Lillian Axe and Vinnie Vincent Invasion. I just want to throw some honorable mention out there for those two bands, and they will be mentioned again on this channel or on another tier list. But those are two bands that I think are woefully left off this list in the first place. Sure, they shouldn't be any higher than 40 or 39, but they should be mentioned. Because without Vinnie Vincent Invasion, super successful bands like Slaughter don't exist probably. And uh, Lillian Axe just fucking rules. So there's that. All right, on to the tier list. Here we go. All right, number 40 on this list was Hanoi Rocks. Hanoi Rocks is a band that gets a lot of credit for starting the whole glam rock thing. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with that, being that New York Dolls and Kiss came before them, but they were different. New York Dolls didn't play the same style of music, and Kiss de definitely didn't play uh, the same type of music, and they were also kind of darker. Uh, Kiss had a darker glam to them as opposed to the, to the pretty boy type of glam that Hanoi Rocks came with. So... The other thing that I want to say about Hanoi Rocks is that I think they're vastly underrated. To be number 40 on this list is a crime. To be even on this list is a crime. I don't think they're a hair metal band. I think calling them glam is the appropriate title. I think their music sounds more like uh, more like Bowie or, or punk at times. So I think calling them hair metal is really a crime to them because they're automatically roped into Poison and, and those types of bands, and they sound nothing like that at all. But we have to start somewhere. So they're number 40 on, on D's list. I'm going to throw them in a solid B because I feel like they are a fantastic band, great singer, great presentation, tragic ending to this band with uh, the death of, of one of their major members of and uh, kind of stopped them dead in their tracks. So I'm going to put that on the B slot. Number 39 Extreme, another one, two in a row, where how the hell is this band a hair metal band compared to the likes of Poison or even Warrant, Firehouse, and those bands? Extreme is a funk-laced rock band who had a ballad as a hit, and it's the beginning of a trend where you're going to see some of these bands, it, it the hair thing was an arbitrary thing that was after a while, just slapped onto bands who had a ballad as a hit. Extreme, you, if you would have bought 
porn or graffiti on the strength or on just knowing more than words, you would have been very, very disappointed and or shocked by what you heard. Nothing else on that album sounds like more than words, and I, for one, am very thankful for that. Extreme just put out a very fantastic album called Six. Can't wait to see them on tour next month. Extreme is an A-tier band, in my opinion, and that's where they're going to go. A-tier. Jackal is a band that literally got famous off of two things. Even to this day, their live performances are much talked about through the years. I've always heard that they put on a fun show, a great show. I've never had the luxury of seeing them. Maybe you call it a luxury. I think I, the reason why I've never seen them is because I don't really like their music all that much. I like one song. And then the other reason why they're famous is because of a chainsaw. <laughs> I mean, the gimmick of, it's literally a one-trick pony gimmick, and that's why this band will fall immediately down to an F-tier band as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I just don't like Jackal on any level. Steelheart is a band that, they only had two albums, so we really didn't get a lot out of them, and we didn't get to see a lot. Their singer, M -J Miljenko, Miljenko? <laughs> Miljenko, I, I, it's just so bad. I feel so bad, but his name is Miljenko Matajevic, I think it is. And who gives a fuck what his name is? The guy just belts. The guy's voice is absolutely insane. And he went on to have prominence by providing the voice for Mark Wahlberg's character in the movie Rockstar. And those songs absolutely slap. <laughs> But the two albums that they put out were really pretty good albums. I mean, they were ballad-laced. I'll Never Let You Go was the big hit for them. She's Gone is such an insane song. And then their second album, Tangled in Reigns, as cheesy as it was. It was cheese ball and a half, but there was a lot of good bangers on there. I, I would actually put Steelheart in a uh, a solid... They're a solid C-tier band. I, I like some of their songs. I wouldn't say I dislike a lot of their songs. But I would also say that I didn't necessarily love a lot of their songs either. They're kind of ho-hum and not memorable at all. Jesus Christ, Night Ranger's on this list. How is Night Ranger on this list? Another arbitrary pick because Sister Christian, A Ballad, was a huge hit. Listen, I've used this example before and I will use it again. I used it for Tesla once upon a time and they'll come up on this list and I'll say it again. Just because a band has a ballad or a few radio hits does not mean that they're a hair metal band. Styx has ballad hits and they're a rock band in the same vein as Night Ranger and yet somehow Styx, not a hair band. Night Ranger is a hair band? I don't get it. Regardless of that, in terms of a tier list, Night Ranger belongs in the A range here because they're just a fantastic, fantastic rock band. If I'm ranking as a hair band, they belong in the F tier because they're not a hair band. But I'm not going to discredit the greatness of Night Ranger by putting them in an F tier. So as far as hair bands go, I will put them in a in the A tier because just because they're a great band and they deserve more respect than to be put lower than that. Dude, Faster Pussycat. Faster Pussycat is all hair. Well, they're sleaze. They're like a sleaze rock band. They're old school glam rock, sleaze rock, but they're definitely, they definitely embody the whole entire personality of hair metal, hair rock back in the 80s. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, debauchery, the whole thing. And their music sounds like it. They are like the Rolling Stones of hair metal and hair rock. I love Faster Pussycat and I would put them in an A tier. I love this band. Now, I know Autograph has one of the biggest hits of the 80s, or at least maybe not the biggest hits charting-wise. I know it charted well, but it's one of the biggest radio songs I think I've ever heard. If I hear Turn Up the Radio one more time, I might actually off myself in a very gruesome way. That's like pencils in the ears type stuff. Awful song. I mean, it's not a bad song, but my God, I can't hear it again. But it's literally the only song worth listening to from this band. Autograph is a hardcore F tier band if there's ever been one. Kicks is a weird band because I the songs I like from Kicks I really really like. And I've seen them live multiple times and they are fantastic live. Such a great band live. But at the same time, after about 3 or 4 songs I go, "Okay, I feel like I've heard this already." Not really getting anything new from Kicks. So to me, Kicks would be more of a D tier band. They have some really decent songs, but not as decent as Steelheart in my opinion. I'm going to put Kicks in the D tier. 
Saigon kick. Let me tell you about the crime against humanity that takes place when you mention Saigon kick in a hair metal discussion. This band is like King's X. Is King's X a hair metal? Oh, fuck. They play King's X on Hair Nation, don't they? On Sirius. Saigon kick is not a hair metal band. Saigon Kick is the perfect example, the full embodiment of how arbitrary subgenreing is at times. They are literally pigeonholed in this hair metal motif simply because of a song called Love Is On The Way, a ballad that came out and was a mega hit for them. But my God, they are heavy. They, they sound nothing like any hair metal band there is. And it's a disgrace that this band is in the hair metal genre. This is our first S-level tier band. Saigon Kick is just absolutely incredible. Jason Byler, who is um, continuing to do work on his solo stuff right now, is tremendous. He just put out a new album this past year called Postcards from the Asylum, and, and it's under the, the moniker Jason Byler and the Baron Von Bielski Orchestra, and it's fucking great it's so good check it out jason byler rules saigon kick is a tremendous band he's also been in another uh the, there was an early touring version of a band called talisman and super transatlantic which also has uh, other members of saigon kick and extreme bassist pat badger and this is where extreme belongs to extreme belongs more in the category with saigon kick in my opinion than hair metal it's just a crime. It's a complete crime. Tesla's up on this list, and let me tell you something about Tesla. Tesla, not a hair metal band. Tesla's just a regular jeans and t-shirt, badass rock band, period. Dueling guitars, country vibe at times. Sometimes they have a hit, sometimes they have a ballad. But again, for the most part, this is just a balls-to-the-wall rock band. How is Tesla a hair band? That's beyond me. As far as them on a ranking list, on a tier list, Tesla is an A-level band if there's ever been one. I would put them in an S-level, but the only thing that prevents me from putting them on it in the S-level, the superb level, is the fact that I haven't loved their output since Bust a Nut, which was like the mid-90s. So, not that I dislike it so much, but it... It pales in comparison. That's why they don't reach the S level tier. Saigon Kick has the benefit of only having three albums. There is something to be said about longevity though. Tesla's still going strong, they're still touring, and they're still putting out decent songs and decent albums. So go check out Tesla. The Bullet Boys are super interesting to me because if there was ever a Van Halen facsimile from the David Lee Roth era Van Halen, Bullet Boys was it. And it's interesting that David Lee Roth era Van Halen ended in 1984-85. few years went by, and then here was Bullet Boys produced by Ted Templeton. And it was almost like it was meant to be that way, like someone passed a torch. Mark Torian definitely does his best David Lee Roth, and he's actually a way better singer in my opinion. He's got an interesting performing style, a lot like David Lee Roth, not in the same style. David Lee Roth was very acrobatic and very martial arts based, whereas Mark Torian was just funky with his dances and wore weird hats. Like, that's just what he did. But the band is phenomenal. The first two albums are great. Freak Show is one is an all-timer to me. I love that album so much. I'm going to put them in as a solid B. I, I think uh, Bullet Boys are a solid B-level band. They bring a lot of energy. They have a great guitar work. They have great guitar work, great vocals, awesome groove, very good VH type feel to them. If you're looking for something to kind of continue your VH vibe, Bullet Boys is the way to go. Listen, I'm not going to bag on Trickster because they were like literal teenagers when they started, and their first two albums do have some decent songs, but they're just a mediocre band. I mean, they weren't very... I've seen them live back in the day. They weren't very good. Pete Lauren was a great singer on the album, but I don't know. I listen to it now. I think I'm nostalgic for it. I like some of their songs, but based solely on nostalgia. And their stuff just sounds incredibly dated, which is fine. But add on the whininess of it and just the youth, you know, their their age in the first place. I don't know. It just... It's unlistenable at this point. So I'm going to put them in the D tier. I think Trickster's a solid D tier band. LA Guns is an interesting one too. I don't get it. I just, I don't get the LA Guns thing. I like a few songs here and there. I think Phil Lewis is an interesting singer for the time because he doesn't sound like anybody else. And I like that, but I didn't get the LA Guns thing. I don't get the infatuation with them. I, I, everybody 
raved about L.A. Guns. I remember back in the day it was a big deal. Maybe because Tracy Guns was involved with the Guns N' Roses thing. I don't know. But I never bought into the L.A. Guns thing. So for me, this is another another D-tier band. I like a few songs, but overall, I can, uh, you know, you can take or leave L.A. Guns as far as I'm concerned. Striper. Oh. First off, let's just get this right out of the way. As much as I do not get down with the Christy stuff anymore, I Bought it hook, line, and sinker as a kid, boy. Nothing would have made me happier in the world when I went to see Striper live as a kid than to get a Bible blast me in the forehead <laughs> in the middle of a show. That would have been dope. But nowadays, I listen to it, and it's just, I can't. I just can't. With that being said, what a tremendous band this is, okay? Michael Sweet's one of the greatest metal musicians has ever been. He's a guitar god. He's a vocal god. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. Tremendous songwriters, great dueling guitars, the heaviest probably of the hair bands. I'm reluctant to call them hair band, despite the fact that they did have some gigantic hair and they were pretty. So from all the look stuff, they were definitely a hair band, but they did not get into the sex and the drugs part. They did not buy into the, the style of what hair metal was all about. And from a music standpoint, they sound like early power metal at times. So other than the ballads, that which was their bread and butter in terms of their success and their popularity, I have a hard time putting Striper in a strictly hair metal category. With that being said, and with the Christy stuff aside, because I don't listen to Striper anymore. I cannot listen to Striper anymore. I do have to put them in a B tier though because they are a really, really good band. Like if you're looking for top-notch type metal, Yellow and Black Attack, Soldiers Under Command, most of To Hell With The Devil, and a lot of In God We Trust, the first four albums, and then even, um, even Against The Law, tremendous metal, heavy stuff, great vocals, great guitar work, great drumming from Robert Sweet, just, just good music if you're looking for some good 80s hard metal, good stuff. Folks, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Mr. Big is not a hair metal band. They're just a pop rock band if there's ever been one, and a fucking supremely talented one at that. Paul Gilbert comes from Racer X, Billy Sheehan comes from everywhere, just got done playing with David Lee Roth and Steve Vai and that band, and Greg Bissonette on drums. That was a supreme super group. And then he comes to Mr. Big and they're just, they're, they're tapping and they're doing, but they're also writing super poppy ballads and stuff. But it's, none of it is hair metal. None of it fits into this hair rock, hair metal thing. I just don't get it. They are just a pop rock band. And I hate the arbitrary nature which we bestow upon bands. You are, you are hair metal. No, there's nothing metal about Mr. Big. There's nothing hair about Mr. Big. They're a pop rock band. And they're one of the best there's ever been. I am such a fan of this band that I, 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 I'm going to put them in an S tier because I know every damn song and I really enjoy them immensely. Everything they've ever done. Every album. Danger, Danger, Long Island Zone. Boy, do I hate this band. I was super, I used to love this band. When I was a kid, I used to love Danger, Danger. I love their first two albums. But then upon preparing for this, and I still listen to a lot of the hair stuff, and I still listen to a lot of hair rock, and uh, 80s rock, hair rock, hair metal, the whole bit. I just can't listen to Danger Danger anymore, and I, I just don't understand how I liked it in the first place. Some of the songs are okay, but for the most part, this is an F-tier band. I mean, I can't get down with any of it. Naughty Naughty is a stupid song. Bang Bang is a stu stupid... I mean, how, how remedial are we? Naughty Naughty. Bang Bang. Like, fucking stop, okay? Just, it's, it's bad. It's just bad music. I, I don't get it. So, Danger Danger. No good. F tier. Firehouse is another one that I've struggled with over the years. Uh, I really, really liked Firehouse. I saw them live a few times back in the 90s, and I really enjoyed them. And I even spent some time with them in Florida. There was a like a hair rock show, but they weren't calling it that then. This was like in the late 90s, like 1999. And I hung out with them and Chris Jericho. It was weird. but um, and, and I wasn't anybody then. I wasn't doing radio. I wasn't doing this. I was just there as a fan. And I happened to I happened upon these people. And there they were. And it was cool. And they talked to me. And they were nice people. So I don't want to shit on Firehouse. Because they're super nice guys. They're talented musicians. 
CJ Snare's a great singer. I just saw them perform live last year. They did the entirety of their first album. They actually sounded really good. There's some really great songs on the first two albums that I like a lot. And then uh, Category 5 was actually has some really good songs too. They do some really good acoustic stuff. I just can't get... Their ballads are beyond cheesy. Like, their their ballads are like Velveeta cheesy. Like, it is like it is like a supreme mac and cheese sandwich squeezed between three more slices of cheese. Like, it was, it's just the pinnacle of cheese. So for that reason, I'm going to knock them to a C-level band. Not awful. Some really great songs. Helpless is a great song. Overnight Sensation is a great song. Don't Walk Away is a great great song they have some really really good stuff but my god the cheese is just uh, it's unbearable listen vixen gets <laughs> vixen gets a free pass here and, and i know this sounds kind of sexist but let me tell you why vixen gets a free pass i'm gonna put them in a beat here first off without the free pass they have good songs and they perform them well and I've never seen them live in person, but I have seen them live on tape. And they did very well live. But when you're a band at the height of the hair metal phenomenon, as it were, and you have to traverse all the dick that's going around, and you have to make headway in that, you deserve praise just for that alone. Then to produce good songs that have lasted 30 years, I mean, you can hear Crying or Edge of a Broken Heart at any time on any radio station. That says you did something right. And I like a lot of their songs. So to me, Vixen's a B-tier band, and they belong there for that reason. Wasp is interesting because I don't know if they're a hair metal band. They strike me more as like an early Kiss vibe or even an early Motley Crue vibe, and I'll get to Motley when I get to them, but they don't look like a hair band to me. I mean, the the, the blade in the in the in the, the cod piece, blade cod piece in the crotch there, that doesn't strike me. That's that's like a horror thing. That's not hair. And I know that they had the sex, drugs, and rock and roll thing too. Wasp is a conundrum. What is not not super, like what is not confusing about Wasp is that they fucking rip. Okay, they are a fantastic band, a, a tier band all the way. Wasp is a wonderful band, fantastic, just great band, and they deserve to be in the A tier. Crimson Idol, which is definitely not a hair album, but Crimson Idol is one of my favorite albums of the 90s. Just fantastic. Blackie Lawless's voice is so damn good. Wasp is, is A tier all the way. Europe. Other than the consistent timelessness and ram down your throat nature of the final countdown being used in everything from sporting events to commercials to cartoons. I've seen it everywhere. I've heard it everywhere. I solidly put Europe in the F tier because my God, I don't like one single song from this band, including the final countdown. And Carrie is the cheesiest of all ballads. Worse than Firehouse. Take that mac and cheese sandwich that I was talking about from Firehouse and like stack them on top of each other as a triple stacker. That's the famous Europe ballad, Carrie. Wow. Scorpion! Let me tell you about a band who should never be pigeonholed as a hair metal band. The Scorpions have been around since 1965. So think about that for a second. 1965, 20 years before hair metal was even thought of. This band was popular in the late 70s. And I'm going to get to this with another band in a minute too. But Scorpions can't be a hair metal band. I understand that their biggest hits came during the mid 80s, which was the height of hair metal. But they never really changed their sound all that much. They definitely, they didn't have hair. They didn't have hair. Their singer was a more or less a bald dude. They didn't have hair. My God, man. With that being said, I'm lukewarm on the Scorpions as a band. I like a lot of their songs. I really dislike a lot of their songs at the same time. They're a C-tier band as far as I'm concerned. C-tier all the way. Britney Fox overall has a, has a really cool vibe and a really cool energy. Uh, I like some of their songs, but overall they're kind of a mediocre band and I don't really love... Oh. I just fucked up. Did you watch that? That's ridiculous. I, I, I don't really love a lot of their songs. They're kind of mediocre overall in terms of songwriting. So I'm going to throw them in the D tier. I believe that's another D tier band. You wanted the best. You got the best. The hottest band in the world. 1980s Kiss. 
Not quite. Hair metal? I don't know, maybe. It's the same thing with the Scorpions. How do you take a band who came out in 1974, rose to absurd prominence in the 70s, arguably started this glam metal thing. Get, they get a lot of credit because they brought the makeup and blah, 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 and the whole thing. But there's no doubt that in 1985 or so, around the Animal Eyes, Asylum albums, Heavens on Fire, Tears of Falling, they definitely were trying to conform to the times, which was hair metal. So in that vein, and with that being in mind, with Kiss being one of my all-time favorite bands, as an overall band, I would put them in the AS tier, like the top two. But as a hair metal band, I'm going to stick them in the C tier because holy shit, there was a lot of mediocrity on those 80s albums. Holy cow. Really, really not good. 50% of those albums were just full dreck. Another example, Skid Row, of a band that should not be pigeonholed as a hair metal band. They had one ballad in I Remember You, and that is why this happened. Sure, they had more hair than most bands combined, and they were very, very pretty boys. Rachel Bolin and Sebastian Bach, incredibly pretty boys. And Sebastian Bach will walk around and wear that hair metal stuff like a point of pride because well let's face it he's still famous because of that but most of the first album self-titled album was heavy as shit slave to the grind one of the heaviest albums of the 80s and doesn't get enough credit for doing so so much so that the bands that they took on tour to open with them are pantera while they were supporting vulgar display of power and soundgarden while they were supporting bad motor finger Two of the other heaviest albums of the entire decade. Skid Row is not a hair metal band. However, I will say that they are a fantastic band and deserve to be in the A tier. I almost put them in the S tier. The reason why they didn't make the S tier is because they have three albums and one of them just was very mediocre. Subhuman Race doesn't really have a whole lot that I enjoy on it. First two albums, all timers. Third album, mediocre. So... There you go. Great White, they're interesting because they have kind of a Led Zeppelin vibe to them. Very bluesy. You know, obviously not as dark as Zeppelin could get, not as heavy as Zeppelin could get. But Jack Russell definitely has a, a Robert Plant vibe to him, and they certainly have a lot of bluesiness to them. I like some of their stuff, and I, I like a fair amount of their stuff, but not enough to put them above a C tier. I think they're a C tier band. They had uh, a few major hits with Rock Me and Once Bitten, Twice Shy. And I think they, they fit nicely in the C tier. Uh, not bad, but not great either. Just average. Just your average band. Lita Ford is a good one. I'm not sure if she's hair metal either. I'm not sure if she belongs in the hair thing because she had like one or two albums excuse me excuse me excuse me mustache can you get out of my mouth thanks <coughs> she had one or two albums in the mid 80s that reached prominence with kiss me deadly and back to the cave but and then she had close my eyes forever with ozzy who is definitely not hair metal and she comes from the runaways which are not Hair metal, more of a glam, all-female band thing. But regardless of that, Lita Ford is a supreme musician, great performer, good singer. And again, when you're... She was the female. She was the woman of the scene. Uh, there was no one higher than Lita Ford during the 80s. So Lita Ford definitely... I don't know, I put Lita Ford... I, I'm still going to stick Lita Ford in the C category, though. And the reason being... Is that I just don't like, you know what, no, uh, I don't know, I'm contemplating this one. She's either B, do I like as many songs from her as I do Vixen? I do, I think I do. She belongs in the B tier. I'll put her in the B tier with Vixen. Because Vixen, uh, I, I like as many songs from Lita Ford as I do Vixen, so we'll do that. That's fair. I think that's fair. I'll do that. I just deliberated that on the fly. By the way, all of these are being done on the fly, in case you haven't noticed. I haven't, I, I don't make these decisions. Uh, I, I haven't really hashed this out. I just kind of am going on the fly. White Lion is an incredibly underrated band. Vito Brada is one of the best guitarists out uh, of that time, of that era, and deserves to be praised for that reason. I don't love Mike Tramp as a singer. Uh, I've never gotten to see them live, so I don't know what he's like as a performer. But I do like their songs, and I do really enjoy their melodies. So I'm going to put White Lion in a C tier, 
And the reason being is that, again, it goes back to how many songs I like. And I've listened to all their stuff. I really like their first album. Their second album is kind of mediocre at times. I don't like their ballad that made them hit, When the Children's Cry. Or when the Children Cry. I, I just, I don't get off on that like other people. So I'm going to put them in the C tier. Now, here's a very interesting band. White Snake is super interesting. I think that you can solidly consider them a hair metal band, despite the fact that David Coverdale comes from like deep purple roots and is very bluesy a singer and doesn't really fit the rest of these the rest of these singers on this list. However, the videos, the songs, the girls, the whole bit, I, I think I think they definitely fit solidly in the hair metal category. The band was supreme. Adrian Vandenberg and Ainsley Dunbar playing drums and oh my god and then later on Steve Vai and then Vivian Campbell I mean this band was stacked absolutely stacked White Snake is a great band great songs the first uh, not the first two albums because the older stuff is really good but the self-titled album the one that that everybody knows is still the night on it and is this love and the mega hits that's on that album and the next album with Fool for Your Love in the Steve Vai album is fantastic those albums are so so damn good uh, White Snake to me as far as hair metal bands go they have to be I I have to put them I, I like their music so much. I have to put them in an A tier. A tier to me, White Snake has to be an A tier band. Supreme musicians, supreme vocalists, just great songs across the board. Maybe a little overproduced, but for the most part, really great stuff. And now we're getting into the nitty gritty here. Winger is a solid A tier band. Solid A tier band. Love all their stuff. Supreme, wonderful musicians across the board. Reb Beach is one of the best guitarists in the game. Kip Winger. My God, the voice on this guy, the the he's one of the most underrated bassists there is. What a fucking monster musician he is. Rod Morgenstein's one of the best drummers like ever. Like he definitely would rank in like the top 30 or 40 of all time. Rod Morgenstein is incredible. Just saw them live recently and they still killed despite the fact that Kip Winger said his voice was blown because he was sick or whatever. Still killed. They were so good. New album is great. Love Winger. They just the solid A. Solid A. Rat's another band that I could easily put in the A category. I just don't love anything after Reach for the Sky. They they kind of fell off hard. And even not even Reach for the Sky. I don't like a whole lot after Dancing on the Cover. Uh Out of the Cellar, Invasion of Your Privacy, Dancing on the Cover. Great albums. Top to bottom. Reach for the Sky, they start to fall off a little bit. Detonator. Not a big fan. So I think they're phenomenal musicians. I think Warren Demartini is one of the best guitarists out there. This is a full hair band. Stephen Piercy embodies the attitude that you want from a hair band, and his voice is very unique to the era. Not a lot of people sound like Stephen Piercy. So I think Rat's a solid B band. Uh, really good songs in general, but uh, not all top tier. So I think I would put Rat in the B tier. All right, cracking the top 10 of this list, and we got a full-fledged, top-of-the-line band, and that's Dokken. Fucking love Dokken. Oh, my God. I can't get enough of this band. The only issue I have with Dokken is their longevity is not great, but in terms of the albums that they put out before Don Dokken's voice, like, shit the bed, are top-notch. Even the stuff that's obscure, even the albums that people don't know about, even albums like Dysfunctional, Shadow Life, Erase the Sleep, Long Long Way Home and so on. Great, great albums. Really solid stuff. Now, I can get enough of them live right now because Don Dawkins' voice is really, really bad. Saw them last year. He sounded awful. It was really bad. But as far as music goes and especially for the time, Dawkins a top tier band. I need to put them in. Uh, to me, they're an S tier band. George Lynch, Jeff Pilsen, Don Dawkins. Great, great band. Great. So, Slaughter's first two albums are very good. And I just saw them live recently, and uh, Mark Slaughter does not sound good anymore. And upon going back and listening to them, and I don't know, I, I'm not as enthralled with them as I used to be. With that being said, though, I do like a lot of their songs, especially from The Wildlife. I really like their second album a lot. I think it's much more mature than Stick It To You. I can put, I could safely put Slaughter in a C tier. And say that I like enough of their songs to put them in a C tier, but not enough to put them any higher than that. Def Leppard 
is not a hair metal band. Def Leppard is a rock band. Def Leppard's been around since the late 70s and or very early 80s, like 1980 maybe. They never, I, I understand that hysteria and they got into the sex, drugs, and rock and roll and they even teased their hair a little bit. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean that, I don't know, I, I go back and forth. Sometimes I get really annoyed with what makes a hair band and what doesn't. In my opinion, they're not a hair metal band. With that opinion aside, they are a fantastic band. Love almost all of their music. They are a solid A-tier band. Def Leppard's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, one of only, I think, two on this list. I think Kiss and Def Leppard are the only two bands in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on this list. I'm not sure I'll have to look into that, but I think Kiss and, and uh, Def Leppard are the only two. Anyway, Def Leppard's an A-tier uh, band. I mean, just hits, hit upon hit upon hit, and most of them are not cheesy. Even their ballads are fantastic. If you want to talk about the band that really started it all, I understand that Hanoi Rocks gets... Credit for starting it, the the glam metal. But if you want to talk about the band that really, really brought hair metal into prominence and made it a viable art form and a viable commercial success, it's Quiet Riot. When they shot to number one with their album Metal Health on the steam of Come On, Feel the Noise. We've all heard it before. Quiet Riot's a great band. Now, I'm not a huge fan, but that's not for that's not because I think they have bad songs. I just don't love Kevin Dubrow's voice and it becomes grating to me after a while. To me, he's a low rent version of a different singer which I'll get to momentarily. But I like Kevin du I I like him some of the time and I like a lot of their music and a lot of their Musicians, Frankie Benali is a great drummer. Rudy Sarzo is one of the all-time uh, bassists, and he's still around. Great musicians, pretty good songs. I just, and I don't think Kevin Dubrow's a bad singer. It just, I don't know, it just got on me after a while. So for that reason, Quiet Riot will fall to a C-tier band for me, even though I think a lot of their songs are really, really great. Warrant, to me, is an all-time band. And it upsets me to no end that one of the bands coming up on this list is pointed to as the hair metal band, the best band, or whatever, the one that is the epitome of this art form. Because, to me, Warrant was the best of the best out of this group. Not overall. I'm talking about of the ones that are definitely hair metal. Because Warrant is definitely a hair metal band. Skid Row is not really... Extreme is not really, Saigon Kick, Mr. Big is not really, Dokken, Dokken can give them a run. But Warren was so dynamic in, in their ability to write party songs, but also get heavy, and also write ballads that weren't cheesy. I know we've heard Heaven a million times, that's a great song, that's just a great song. I know it's a ballad, but it's not cheese ball like Love of a Lifetime is, or like Carrie is. It's way more palatable. It's a lot less puke-inducing. It's just a good song. And all the other ballads that they made were wonderful. Janie Lane is one of the best songwriters there was. The world lost a tremendous talent, and I really wish he was still alive because I would love to hear what he's making of music these days. Warren is an S-tier band, in my opinion. All the stuff that they did after the hair, hair metal thing collapsed, all great. Ultraphobic, Belly to Belly, great album, great albums. Doggy Dog is one of the best of the 90s period. Warrants an S-level tier band. Alright, down to the top five of the VH1 list. Number five was Cinderella. They're blues rock personified. This is another situation where I really, really like a lot of their songs, but Tom Kiefer's voice just... It's an acquired taste, and it wasn't one that I acquired more than three, four songs, and then I'm like, okay, I've had enough. I really love the album Night Songs. It kind of went downhill from there. It was like Night Songs was really great. Long Cold Winter was very good, and then Heartbreak Station, I think it was, wasn't, I don't know, and then uh, Still Standing was better than Heartbreak Station, but still uh, light years worse than not as good as Night Songs. So for me, Cinderella is a solid C-tier band. I like a lot of their songs. I dislike a fair amount of their songs. They're just an average band as far as I'm concerned. I don't dislike listening to them, though. Motley Crue is and is not a hair metal band simultaneously. It's a wacky, wacky situation. At one time, their first two albums, they were definitely not. Like, if they would have disappeared right after Shout at the Devil, they would not be a hair metal band. They look more like Kiss of the 70s. They sounded more like punk-infused sleaze rock band from L.A. <laughs> They did not sound like a party rock band, okay? Shout, shout, shout. It's 
<laughs> then Theater of Pain happened. They had the ballad. You know I'm a dreamer. And then they rode that wave. Girls, girls, girls. Dr. Feelgood. Full hair metal albums. Can't argue with that. Then, self-titled came out with John Karabi. Was heavy as shit. Full alt rock. What? And then since then, they've kind of gone back and forth with the hair thing, trying to recapture their glory. For argument's sake, let's just say they're a hair metal band and just move on. I think their first two albums, I'm sorry, their first three albums are all-timers. I think the 90, uh, the 94 album with John Karabi is probably the best of the entire catalog. I think the rest of it is uh, mediocre at best. Dr. Feelgood has some moments that's good. Girls, 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 I really don't like any of that album except for maybe Wild Side. It's like the only song I really like. <laughs> I don't know. Motley Crue to me is a... I have to put them in like a... Uh, I'll put them in a B level just because the first three albums are so good. Like every song is almost a, a banger. Bon Jovi. I mean, the 80s albums up through the 90s stuff up till these days, tremendous. I have no problem with Bon Jovi. I like all the Bon Jovi up until these days. And everything since, I can do without. So that sounds like a 50-50 proposition to me. But I love the 80s and the 90s stuff so much, I'm going to put them in a B tier as well. I know I'm not saying much about Bon Jovi, but there's not really much to say. John Bon Jovi is the rock star of the 80s. You can argue it all you want. He was the rock star of the 80s. And that band was the band of the 80s. There was no one bigger, in my opinion. It's not in my opinion. It's probably a fact. Slippery One Way, New Jersey, Keep the Faith, probably three of the biggest albums of the entire decade. Pop, rock, or otherwise. So you can't really dispute that. Twisted Sister? Twisted Sister? You put a Twisted Sister pin on your uniform? A Twisted Sister pin on your uniform? Sorry, I had to try and do that impression. Twisted Sister is a fantastic band. And sure, they had major league misses. But Dee Snider is one of the best singers of the era. That guy's voice is nonstop. It's unstoppable. And he was still good deep into his 60s. Now, I haven't heard him in like a decade. But I think he put out an album actually a few years ago, which wasn't so bad. Had a lot of guests on. It was pretty heavy. It was pretty good stuff. That guy still kills it. They brought the the androgyny and, and the, and the cross-dressing and the whole thing to a whole nother level. Definitely going with the kiss motif, but like, again, more colors. More colors. More. They kind of took what Quiet Riot did and I said that Kevin Dubrow was a low, a low rent version of a certain singer he was low rent D. Snyder in terms of sound D. Snyder was a much better singer much better tone I, I enjoy D. Snyder's voice so much better I also enjoy their songs much better that's why Quiet Riot sits in the C tier and Twisted Sister will go to a B tier I think they are a great band I think I like a lot of their songs but they did have leader of the pack and some other things that just didn't hit for me but i think b tier is pretty solid and then finally to me the most overrated and overblown hair metal band there is but yet because of their commercial success because of how much makeup they wore and because of their flamboyant shows and their excessive debauchery poison was the number one band on this list and I think that's the one thing they definitely got right on the VH1 list. I think Poison is the number one all-time hair metal band. However, on my tier list, they are a solid D-tier band. Why do they put them in a D-tier band? Because I used to like them a lot. And then there came a point where I guess I grew up. And I started listening to them and musically, they lack a lot. And Brett Michaels is nothing special as a singer. Good personality, seems like a decent guy. Not much of a singer in my opinion. CeCe DeVille is probably the best part of the band. Pretty solid guitarist, pretty great guitarist. I've heard some really good things from him. But in terms of the songs, I don't know, they sound like everything else. And and once you've heard, as far as I'm concerned, once you've heard one Poison song, you've heard them all. And that to me is indicative of a band that's mediocre at best. So, Poison, D-level tier. And that's it. That's the tier list, folks. We got... Four S-level bands, and uh, upon further review, I'm going to change one or two of these. So here we go. I think I'm going to put Extreme up in the S-level tier, because upon thinking about it, I literally love every single song. There's not, there's, I don't think there's one Extreme song that I strongly dislike. There's some that I can wince at and go, okay, whatever, first album stuff. But I'm going to put them up in the, S, uh, in the S tier. The only other one that I want to change, I think, here 
is I think I want to... I don't want to put Tesla up there. I don't want to put Skid Row. No, actually, I think I'm good with all of these. I think I'm good with everything else. Yeah, no, it's pretty solid. I think I just wanted to move Extreme up to the S tier because I think that's where they belong. Four bottom of the barrel bands, Danger, Danger, Jackal, Autograph. D tier was Kicks, Trickster, LA Guns, Britney Fox, Poison. C tier, Steelheart, Firehouse, Scorpions, Kiss, Great White, White Lion, Slaughter, Quiet Riot, and Cinderella. The most populated was the Mediocrity tier. B tier, Bullet Boys, Hanoi Rock, Striper, Vixen, Lita Ford, Rat, Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, and Twisted Sister. Twisted Sister! The A tier was Night Ranger, Fast the Pussycat, Tesla, Wasp, Skid Row, White Snake, Winger, and Def Leppard. And then the S tier, the vaunted S tier. Saigon Kick, Mr. Big, Dokken, Warrant, and Extreme. Well, that's gonna do it for this.